Hello everybody. I have today these two variable inline attenuator. One is the balanced version and this one is a single-ended version. They are designed to install in front of the power amp, meaning in the, at the input of the power amp. So at the output, the cable is kept as short as possible. Standard length is uh, six inches, really that's six or seven inches. But I can do as long as possible. But the better the cable between the attenuator and the input of the power amp is actually better. This one is an optional 12 inches. Um, if your installation is allowed, it's, it is better to be as short as possible. In fact, in theory, it should be no cable at all, but we live in the real life, so we have to be practical. So some cable is has to be there. So why do we need this variable attenuator? And I am calling them a variable attenuator, 0 dB to minus 22 dB, and a balanced version and a single-ended version. I haven't figured out the exact model number, so I'm just gonna call that and then put it on the website as is right now so if you need to order one of these you can let us know and why do we need them there are um, nowadays that the output of the source like cd player da converter are very high relatively a lot higher than 30 years ago maybe even 40 years ago like a phono stage that they start start with two volts and now it is like three volts three and a half volts sometimes four volts and with that output a lot of preamp or processor doesn't attenuate enough before the signal going into the power amp. So the, the preamp going into this way, and this is going to the power amp. And so if there's not enough attenuation, your power amp, the speaker output of the power amp will be very loud, even at your volume control point at like seven o'clock, 7.30. So common complaint is I don't have enough play on the volume control. And by the time I turn it to eight o'clock, it's very loud. That's a common complaint of a mechanical volume control with a logic control, digital control. They have up to 100 step, which is 100 dB attenuation, which is okay. But the problem of having a high, too high gain of the power amp or the power amp having too high gain, which I have covered in the video regarding the signal to noise ratio between the preamp and the power amp. I'm going to put the link into this video. In the description of this video, you can look it up. And having too much attenuation in the preamp, that means your power amp is really have too much gain. And if you have a high efficiency speaker, 90 dB or up, you will start to hear a lot of hissing when there's no music. So the best way is to have lower gain on the power amp. But sending the amp back to manufacturer and ask them to lower the gain is very costly. Most of the time, it's impossible, very difficult to impossible. In my in, in the case of mine, I can do it. I still have to charge you, and also costly. So the most, the easiest, no need for shipping. Just use a cust plug and play. Is one of these. Is variable. Now I do all also make a fixed attenuation and. I also see fixed attenuation LCA version available off, off the shelf online, which I don't make really, because it's actually the, the, uh, the most difficult to make by hand. But these two are uh, variable stereo version. Of course, I can make it a, a mono, mono version, which is cost more because of two chassis and two plates and two of everything and divided in, in, into two. But if I, this is a standard two stereo version, balanced version, single ended version, left and right channel. And you can see it has a, let me put my light away. It has a two knobs, one per channel. And the maximum attenuation is 22 dB like this, 22 dB, which means you will never turn the volume all the way down. I mean, absolutely silent with this attenuator. It's not designed to be as a volume control. It's designed to be attenuate the gain of the power amp by 20 dB and variable all the way up to bypass. Bypass is zero. So same thing as this one. So the middle is a middle is pro approximately 13 and a half dB. 
Oh, that's the other light now. Okay, so I look, go like this. Um, the middle middle at 12 o'clock is 13 and a half dB. And you can adjust it based on the gain of the amplifier. And most amplifier nowadays, they are 25 dB to 30, 35 dBs. That's a power amp gain. My amps actually lower gain at 21.5 dB in general for this purpose. So you don't have to actually use it. And there are occasion that even customers using my amp and preamp because they use high efficiency speaker and or outputs of the DA converter or the source is way too high. They do need attenuation. And again, and you can go back to my signal to noise ratio video and what is my ideal range of gain for the power amp. My my personal ideal range is actually 15 dB to 20 dB, and preamp gain is 15. Um, a preamp gain is actually 15 dB to 25 dB, and the power amp gain is actually 10 dB to 15 dB. I misspoke on this first one. So again, preamp gain is 15 dB to 25 dB. 20 dB is probably okay, and the power amp gain for my personal preference is actually 10 dB to 15 dB. So let's get back to this attenuator and not go, no, not get off track. So this is available, and that's the purpose of using this. Now you can also use this attenuator between, let's say, DA converter and preamp, and attenuate the DA converter output to match your phono stage output. And I, I know there's a lot of preamp out there. The newer preamp actually have adjustment, but there are still a lot of older preamp out there that doesn't. So do we have more new preamp or old preamp? I don't know. But they, but there are so many customers have that issues. And it's a legitimate issue. It's worth fixing it, worth making product to fix it. So these are the two attenuator. This is the balanced version. And there's a single-ended version. And these are the output end going into the power amp or preamp. And these are the input ends. And that's it for today. And that's all I need to tell you. And until next time, stay safe. Bye.